Hello everyone, today is about to get creepy, because today we are going to have a look at the pointless top 10 creepiest NPCs in World of Warcraft. So get your tea or popcorn ready, let's have a look at them. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Pointless Top 10, a show where we make top 10 lists of the pointless things. Why are we flying by this pointless statue in Booty Bay? Because inside pointless things are treasure. Let's begin. 10. Number 10 are the panicked children. And that may be the first time anyone's ever said that <laughs> in a top 10 list, maybe ever. Uh, but these are really creepy because these kids are like looking for their parents. And, and I guess this is when the them. horde has invaded Stormsong Valley. And their parents are literally just strung up to the buildings because they got hit by arrows and stuff. And they're saying quotes like, I need to find my friends. Why aren't you moving? I'm scared. Uh, mommy said the soldiers always kept the bad guys away. Where did the soldiers go? Which is really wow. creepy. I forgot this was even in the game. This was one of That's those things horrible. like, I think I just glanced over or when I did this, I was like, what the shit? And then I just kept moving along. This is actually That's insane sad. that this is in World of Warcraft. Like some people are like, oh, can we bring back the war in Warcraft? right now it's all ponies and candy and fairies and whatever like literally a couple expansions ago we have this kid crying about his mom or dad or whatever into a post and they're like you could put this in vanilla out people be like this is one of the most hardcore things in the game because it's bfa people are like those bfa <laughs> Either way, this shit's creepy, and that's why it's number 10. Nice. It's number nine it's is creepy. Interrogator Vicious. I mean, both. And Interrogator Vicious is the human found in the Scarlet Monastery graveyard that says things such as, I'll rip the secrets from your flesh. Naughty secrets. Tell me. Tell me everything. Which is actually, I think, the main reason people remember this guy. <laughs> um, Law-wise, can someone correct me if I'm wrong? I even forsaken able to feel a thing. I always thought Forsaken have no feeling because if they did, they would feel their own rotten flesh and would suffer, right? And I heard that if they actually use holy magic, they get the feeling back, right? So how do you even torture a Forsaken? Does that even work? They, they are, they're not feelings. Like you can take their arm literally off and they just keep walking and stuff. Isn't it like that? I thought that's like how undead are in, in the uh, Warcraft universe. Or am I wrong? Or can they actually feel something? But since they're undead and they have like parts missing, they have basically permanent wounds. If they would feel something, wouldn't they constantly be in pain, t t technically? So I'm pretty sure they must be numb. Otherwise, it would be not logical that they are undead because they would suffer permanently. Because they have wounds that just don't heal or f skin that doesn't grow over their bones, right? Naughty secrets. Tell me. Tell me everything. Which That's is actually, I think, so the main reason people remember this guy. <laughs> Because you'd get there and you'd be like, dude, what, what is this guy saying? Here's a little background on him. James Vicious, which I think is a play on words for like vicious, right? It's vicious, but vicious, whatever, is the Scarlet Crusade's lead interrogator at the Scarlet Monastery. He enjoys torturing any captured undead and takes great pride in his work. He's known for his unrelenting sadism, cruel expertise, and high-pitched voice. Interrogator Vicious has tortured Vorel Senguts for weeks. Vicious took Senguts' wedding ring and gave it to his own wife, Nancy Vicious. Nancy lives with Grandpa Vicious, who presumably is James' father, although it's not mentioned, at a cottage on the eastern coast of Lordamere Lake in the Alterac Mountains. I also love how his dad's just named Grandpa Vicious. Like, he doesn't have a name like Joe Vicious or something. He's just Grandpa Vicious. So but strange. from all that, this guy's one of the most notorious creepy NPCs in World of Warcraft. And it's that's cruel. why he's number nine. Or is the real torturer the rat? Dun, dun. <laughs> the rat probably one. does help him, actually. <laughs> eight. Number eight is Dr. Weevil, and Dr. Weevil's an elite undead gnome located on Alcaz Island in Dustwallow Marsh. He has several minions of Weevil scattered around his compound, and all of which are apparently being mind-controlled by him. He actually used to be alive, but when he died, the sa Ah, he has the um, Death Knight skin, right? Because I was just thinking, wait, undead gnomes? I only know leper gnomes. I, I don't think there are actually... Um but yeah, uh, if you have the skin of the Death Knight, I mean, that's technically... Yeah, that's undead, so... I, I, yeah, that counts. Edited around his compound, and all of which are apparently being mind-controlled by him. We do have undead him. goblins, though, right? He actually used to be alive, but when he died, the second that Dr. Weevil's heart stopped, his ultimate plan was put into motion. After adventurers looted his body, a yellow fluid slowly filled his veins, and jumper cables were implanted to shock him back to life. 
Was this undeath? Alchemical engineering? No one's quite sure, but it left him sallow skinned and over four times as evil as before. That's according <laughs> to the Return to wow. Alcaz Isle in patch 7.1. Dr. Weevil is also clearly a reference like to Dr. Evil from Austin Powers. But one of the creepy things that I haven't mentioned yet is Dr. Weevil used to have a thing where if you fought him solo, uh, he would mind control you and you'd have to stand near his bedside for like two minutes and you just couldn't move. And a lot of times you'd get stuck in this mind control loop. What? So you'd have to like invite a friend to come help you get out of it or you'd have to do this in a group so that didn't happen. Imagine just fighting wow. this guy you didn't even know that and then all of a sudden you're mind controlled you just have to stand there and you're like, uh... <laughs> That's cool, uh, actually. So that was the thing that really made me consider putting Dr. Weevil on this list and that's why... He's number eight. Seven. Number seven is Thaddeus. Thaddeus is the fourth oh, and final boss of the Construct he's the creepiest Order in boss Max ever. Ramus, and he is a large flesh titan creature thing. Uh, apparently, he has been pieced together from the flesh of the innocent women and children. This massive abomination dwells in one of Nax Ramus's experimental labs. That actually what blew my mind when I heard this. Like, what is he made of? And, and then when, when I heard, like, children and women, and actually created a male out of this, right? Was this, he's by appearance male, right? I even think his voice, is his voice male? I forgot like how he sounds like, but I, it's crazy. Like they made a male out of females. Okay, I'm confused. Children. This massive abomination <laughs> dwells in one of Nax Ramus's experimental laboratories flanked by huge two whites. I think Stalag it's a reference to Fugan. Frankenstein. Powerful bolts of electricity arc through the laboratory, supercharging Thaddeus and his white minions, and it is said that the souls contained in Thaddeus are fused together, eternally you bound freed them, within uh, that if foul you, prison if you kill of him. flesh. I think you one get of the a creepiest thing things to me is once you kill Thaddeus, he's like, thank you. Which yes, to me shows I told that you. he was already extremely distraught and in pain or whatever's going on inside that body. It's the been other ages thing since is I did that the dungeon. If you're in the lower part of Nax Ramus, I mean, you'll right. hear these screams in the background, kind of these faint cries that are just like, stop, make it stop, help me. Ah. And if you kill Thaddeus, I believe those go away. So uh, those must have been the souls and stuff trapped in From Thaddeus. The kids and so women. I guess in a way, it's actually good that you kill him because then everybody, I guess, is at peace now, but maybe not. I don't know. I don't know how this works, but either way, it's pretty messed up. And that's why Thaddeus is number seven. Six. Number six is Chal, and Chal is a mysterious shapeshifter disguised as a female troll in Negrand. She's also an alternate Negrand as well, which is where you find out a lot more about Chal. So initially in the Outland, uh, you would go there and Chal's just at a daycare, right? Being like, hey, the babies are sleeping, you gotta keep it down. And you're like, oh, she's like a daycare person, right? But then you see like some skeletons scattered around and stuff and you're like, this is a little weird. But in the alternate Draenor, there is an orc named Garrock and he knew her as a child, but he says even as the years have gone on and he has aged into an old man, Chal has remained young and beautiful. So he's concerned that Chal had something to do with the death of his wife and sends the adventurer to investigate. Oh, yeah, then did when you go confront Chal, she says, I remember her, she Isn't was as grand? you see me now, until I drain the life from her wretched body. And then she transforms, actually, into her current troll form. And she also says, I will devour you. So, pretty clear that she is eating people to stay young, and she's probably wow. eating all of the babies at the daycare back in the grand. So, I actually think they did a good job tying together the alternate Draenor version and the Outland like version. A horror I think it's pretty cool. But she is very or weird and creepy. And actually, there's a lot of like weird lore implications. Like, is she a demon? Is she like some weird thing? Like, you don't really know what she is. She's a shapeshifter clearly. How is she like, original from? what that even means, right? She a void is she creature? like some void creature? I don't know, but what I do know is she's number six. Five. Number five are the children of Goldshire. Maybe a demon? And the children of Goldshire are six human children that walk on the path from Goldshire to Stormwind City. But the main thing is that they go to an empty house and go to the second floor and form a pentagram there. And they just stand around remaining silent and not moving. You can also hear some creepy sounds. And you'll also hear Cthune, the old god, being like, you will die. Which is pretty freaky. Wait, they are actually controlled by the old god and they're doing some rituals or what? What's up with those children? That is like, that's actually very creepy. <laughs> I saw them before run around. I actually never followed them. So I can like, if next time if I see them, I can just go into the inn with them and just uh, follow them, right? Oh, do they actually stop this when I'm close to them? Do I have to keep a distance or can I actually interact uh, during this? The old god being like, you will die. Just wow. pretty freaky. 
They also do this every day at 7 a.m. server time, which I'm not going to lie. I thought that was kind of dumb. I'm like, 7 why are they doing this at like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., right? That I'm feels sleeping. like it would be a lot creepier. Like 7 a.m., like, oh, the sun's coming up. Let's go to the pentagram. Midnight <laughs> would be nice. What do you do that? Like at 2 a.m.? I don't know. I just thought that was dumb. Either way, this is actually a reference to a bunch of Blizzard employees. So according to John Stats, who I actually interviewed in a fishing with Krendor back in the day, the children's geometric formation was not meant to be satanic at all. Players saw it as a pentagram, but it was just a function of the children simply being centered on Cameron and thus forming a circle. The children are actually meant to be a reference to Blizzard's Dungeon Department employees, and then they added in all the creepy sounds and stuff like that. But, I mean, I think the funny part here is that everybody was like, dude, this is creepy, this is weird, why is this in the game? But it's one of the reasons I wanted to put the children of Goldshire on this list, because in a bunch of other videos, they consider these kids like... But that explains why they put it um, in at like 7 a.m. that they do this. So, so it became unintentionally creepy, and people actually made some some creepy pasta out of this, right? Like some, some theories, like dark ones. Oh, they are summoning old gods and stuff. Ah, I see. So it's kind of like they had a different attention, but it turned out it's something else. And they already set the server time like 7 a.m. Maybe if they would have known it turns out so creepy, they would have changed it to like a night time, like 11 p.m. or midnight or something. One of the creepiest things in WoW, but really behind the scenes, this was just a big inside joke. And I think that's kind of funny. And that's why it's number five. Four. Number four is Stalvin Mistmantle, and Stalvin is an undead human with a bloodied past. So this whole quest begins at Madam Eva, who's a human quest giver located in Darkshire in Duskwood, and she is like, I sense a great disturbance through my veins. A name came to me, Stalvin. I imagine that's how she talks. Every creepy old lady wow. has to sound like that. Cause I mean, what if they, what if she had like a valley girl accent? <laughs> It'd probably be a little weirder. But anyway, you go on this <laughs> big quest train, you gather all these little breadcrumb things, these notes and letters from all over, and you learn that Stalvin is actually this creepy tutor guy that had an infatuation with a younger woman named Taloa, which is an anagram for Lolita, which is a reference to the novel Lolita. Taloa gives Talvin a flower, and he interprets this as a romantic gesture, but she's clearly just being nice to him, and compares him to an old uncle, which makes him go crazy, and apparently murders her, her fiancé, and potentially her family, but wow. definitely both of them, with an axe. And you can actually get that axe. It's called Stalvin's Reaper, and it's a world drop from monsters in the 33 to 40 range. In his notes, he claims that the blood he'd spilled paled in comparison to the tears he shed. <laughs> he then carefully wow. hid the bodies and retreated back to his home northeast of Darkshire and remained there until the darkness crept into him and consumed him. He now resides in Manor Mist Mantle, lonely and mad, hungering for more revenge on any person who dares come near. I think one of the reasons people love this quest is it really does make you feel like you're a detective True. trying to figure out a mystery, like you're yes. trying to collect all these notes and put everything together. Yeah, because you have to do something to find out like what was happening, and then you find out and you go to kill him. Together, and it, it really does breadcrumb questing. Well, I love those kind of quests over, actually in and, games. You know, back when you're doing it and you're not paying attention to the story, you're like, oh, I gotta go over here and over there. But when you're actually paying attention to the story, you're like, wow, I need to go over here and find this. And like, what's this do, right? And you just, you start piecing everything together. And, and it's always it's something really dark well about done. it. Now, Stalvin himself <laughs> is creepy as shit. <laughs> <laughs> and very weird. At the end of the day, you end up number, killing Stalvin yeah. and you go back to Madame number Eva one. and she's like, good job, Stalvin's dead and it's over or whatever. And then that's it. That's the quest. But overall, Stalvin's creepy and that's why he's number four. Three. Number three is Abercrombie and Stitches. And Abercrombie is a hermit who's also known that's as a the reference to a and certain... Stitches, as you probably all know, is Stitches. Yeah. Uh, and I think maybe hearing this out to loud, you might realize the brand, reference huh? of Abercrombie and Fitch. Abercrombie and Stitch. Stitches, right? You get it? Ha ha. Yeah. Those are both the references, all right? Yes. <laughs> so Abercrombie was a kindly alchemist and citizen of Raven Hill. He was driven mad by the death of his wife, Eliza. To restore her, he used dark magic to place his own heart within the bosom of his dead spouse. What? What the shit? <laughs> That this is revived sick. Eliza, but it cursed her with a hunger for human flesh, forcing the embalmer to keep her buried. And of course, you can go out back and find her in her grave, and she's like, wait, you aren't my husband, but he must have sent you, and you look delicious. Uh. <laughs> and you kill her and get her heart, which is his heart. The crazy part with this quest is you actually get him a bunch of ingredients and you aid him. Wait, but is he technically undead? Like, if he gave his heart to his dead spouse to reanimate her, 
Does that mean he's an undead? But he doesn't look undead. That's so creepy. It's his heart. The crazy part with this quest is you actually get him a bunch of ingredients and you aid him in creating stitches without even knowing it. And then everyone's like, oh my God, what did you do? And you're like, I don't know, I was just doing a quest. And they're just like, you helped them create stitches. Oh my God. And so Abercrombie essentially creates stitches as a gift for the mayor of Darkshire and sends him to terrorize the town. But then you get really? his heart, you stop stitches and you save the day. I love the aspect of helping this mad scientist, but then it turns out that you're actually helping him to do something bad without even knowing it. I just think that's pretty fun. Yeah. So that's why Abercrombie and Stitches are number three. Ooh. Number two is Raw the Gluttonous uh. and the Weird Pig Beast Men. So Raw yeah. the Gluttonous is the third boss of Waycrest Manor. And according to the adventure guide, Raw the Gluttonous was once the main chef for the Waycrests. Now his kitchen is a chamber of horrors where he has been serving portions of himself to the damned guests that haunt these halls. So yeah. when I read this, I was like, hold on. He is serving. Wait, he's using his own flesh to feed them? Serving? Wait, wait, wait. He looks, he looks like he doesn't have too many wounds. ...of himself to the damned guests that haunt these halls. So, when I read this, I was like, hold on. He is serving portions of himself? And uh, I, I remember doing this boss fight back in BFA, but I don't remember that part of it. And now that I've realized that, I was like... What so is going creepy. on? What is, he's literally serving parts of himself. That is insane. And he's just this big, like, gluttonous pig man. And he's just got a bunch of garbage all around See, him. See, or not? He's really it's creepy. Like, tell. <laughs> I, I can't believe I didn't think of this guy until now. I was, like, looking through everything. And I was like, oh, my God. This guy has to be on the list. There's, like, weird Ugh. demon pigs all around. There's, like, a couple beast men looking guys back kicks. there. And then there's the actual beast men on the outside. And... They're just really freaky looking. I Their tried to look up any weird. more behind it, and it said beast men are grotesque beings found in Drustvar that resemble beast, mostly pig hybrids. They appear to be stitched together out of corpses of humans and animals, while Raw the Gluttonous uh. used to be a human who was transformed by magic. But honestly, looking at some of these half human, half animal hybrid things is it's freaky. Like it, it just it gives you those uncanny valley vibes. You know what I mean? It's like one of like, the best Ugh. places to. It's like a weird pig skeleton and stuff too. Yeah. Like. Oh my god, some of this stuff, I I didn't even realize this was in the game. I'm not going to so lie. Dark. I don't think I did some of these quests, but it's, it is it is weird. Also, Raw the Glut. Ah, I think they actually have the animation or the model of the ghoul, right? If you look at their movements, like here, for example, that's from the ghoul. Some of these quests, but it's... It is, it is weird. Also, yeah. Raw the Gluttonous is a reference to the Swine Prince boss from Darkest Dungeon, and the Servant Splitter item he drops is a direct reference to the game. So there you go. A little bit of reference knowledge, a little bit of weird stuff, and a lot of... I don't know what's going on. It's a crumb and that's monster. why this is number two. One. And number one is Abby Lewis. And oh my god, is this why is she kid number one? just the weirdest thing in World of Warcraft? This is easily the creepiest thing in World of Warcraft. Maybe the most just unsettling thing in World of Warcraft. What's happened like, to you? Like, if you do this quest, you you literally sacrifice a cat. I, like, again, what? referencing back to people like, wow, has become fairies and, you know, ponies and stuff. You sacrifice a cat. <laughs> this is, this shit is insane, man. So... Abby's just skipping around. She's just singing her song, which is, Our poor little village is dead. All the people have gone stiff or fled. There is no more noise except me and my toys, just like the Dark Birdie said. So she's just oh, singing her goosebumps. nursery rhymes about how people are dead and dark birds talk to her. <laughs> then she has a tea party where she invites Larry the Raptor, her cat, uh, and stuffed animals and everything. She, she, she sacrifices the cat. It's just... It's the, she's insane. Like she takes she's you possessed the town, by she the devil or something. That's like dead. She's like everybody said Mr. Hayes' heart was true, but it must have been the biggest for sacrificing as well. Like she just says crazy shit like that, and you just oh, go around wow. and she like shows you all these dead people, and then you go to her like sacrificial tea party. And that's it. It's it's crazy. In fact, I wish Abby Lewis was a raid boss so that we could actually fight her because I would be motivated. Yes. Because yes, like, me too. she has a much better backstory of evil than like the jailer and some people we fought against, right? Like an Abby That's Lewis a creepy expansion book, right? in Shadowlands would With have made much face. more sense than the jailer. So I also, listen, I always take my shots at the jailer whenever I can. So either way, that's why Abby Lewis is number one. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this episode of Pointless Top 10. Make okay, maybe I actually agree here with number one. Because I was about to say, isn't this this uh, half pig, uh, half human person that... 
treats himself to people creepy or something. But no, I actually think, yeah, uh, number one, I agree this time, definitely. That's the creepiest one, this kid, like, sacrificing her own pets and stuff and talking about what happened uh, to her city, how nobody's alive or there anymore in, like, a cheerful way. And then just jump around happily and doing those satanic kind of rituals or something. Yo, that is actually crazy wow i actually some of those npcs i didn't know i didn't know about this kit i saw those um half pick half zombie human i mean ghoul like thingies right i've been in this place i haven't quested there but i quickly uh, went there and they looked so strange um i knew about this amber combi fitch uh, guy right but some i didn't even know right so i have to check them uh, later when i get in game but yo like, wow, has some really creepy stuff. This is insane. And it's actually fitting right now because, like, we have Halloween soon, right? But about this list, wow, some stuff is so creepy. And this is something I actually want to see in the next WoW expansion. If Blizzard makes the next WoW expansion, they need to add more references and creepy stuff to the game just like they did back in the day even, right? Like this with Nex Ramas, for example, with, I don't know what this uh, big uh, flesh golem's name was. What was his name? Ta Taruza, Tado or something. I forgot the name, but that was so creepy because I remember like, when I first killed him, I heard a voice after that and that creeped me out. Like, why is there suddenly a voice saying something like, oh, thank you and stuff? Like, wait, what? And I think throughout this dungeon, with Tedanus or what his name is, you hear sometimes a voice. I think that comes from him too, right? I think I read this somewhere that the voice in Nexramas you sometimes hear, it is from him. And I think it actually stops after you kill him, this voice, if I'm not mistaken. Then you don't hear it anymore. But you hear it throughout the dungeon sometimes. That what makes him even like creepier, right? But yeah, there's there's some some hidden like dark stuff there. Wow. But yeah, guys, uh, that's it for today's video. If you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. And I will see you guys next time.